This video is for negative and zero exponents. These are the last two skills that you have to practice in the exponent rules review. The video is strictly optional, but I did not like the Delta Math Help video and I thought I would create a supplemental video to help you. I'm going to go through just a series of examples because I think sometimes we learn best simply by doing or by following a series, some examples. Okay, let's look at problem one, number one. We have 4 to the power of 1 times 4 to the negative 1. We have a negative exponent here, so there are two ways of solving this problem. The first one is to make that negative exponent positive by changing places. Remember, take the reciprocal so it becomes 4 to the 1 divided by 4 to the power of 1, which is simply 4 divided by 4 or 1. So in this case, we've made the negative exponent positive first. Another way of solving this problem, please notice that you have the same base, so you can use the product rule and add 4 plus a negative 1 will be 4 to the 0. 4 to the 0 power is 1. So in this case, all you had to do is use the product rule and add the exponents. Okay, let's look at this example. This is just a different way of writing a multiplication sign. So you have 3 to the negative 1 times 3 to the 0. The first thing we could do is go ahead and use our exponent rules. 3 to the negative 1 is really 1 over 3 or 1 over 3 to the power of 1. I could have written a 1 here, but I didn't. Remember, you take the reciprocal to make your exponent positive, and 3 to the 0 is going to be 1, so it's 1 third or 1 over 3 times 1, which is just simply 1 third. Another way of doing this problem is you could use the product rule and again add your exponent since you have the same base. Negative 1 plus 0 is 3 to the negative 1 and then go ahead and use our rule for negative exponents and write it as 1 third. I wanted you to see both types and you can use either method whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, now let's look at problems 3 and 4. You have 2 to the negative 8 divided by 2 to the 4th. So the first thing I like to do is go ahead and make that negative exponent a positive. So we'll put 1 over 2 to the 4th times, now remember we're going to have to flip places, so 2 to the negative 8 is in the numerator, move it to the denominator, times 2 to the 8th. Now we can use the product rule same base. So it's 1 over 2 to the 4 plus 8. Add your exponents, you get 1 over 2 to the 12th. Now over here, this is a little different. This is where we're going to keep the negative 8, but we're going to go ahead and use the quotient rule that says we can subtract our exponents because we have the same base. We have a 2, so it'll be negative 8 minus 4 negative 8 minus 4 is going to be a negative 12. So we have 2 to the negative 12 or 1 over 2 to the 12. You can write it either way. Most textbooks and most standardized tests would prefer a positive exponent. However, Delta Math does have some answer choices that have negative exponents. So know that either of these were saying the same thing. It's just two different ways of writing the answer choice or the answer, sorry. Now let's look at number four. You have six to the negative one raised to the power of two. So the first thing I would do is make that negative exponent a positive. So write it as one over six. Now it becomes one over six to the power of one, right? And then that's the same thing as one. And I probably skipped a step. I probably should have gone ahead and written one over six squared and then finally 1 over 36. So there, that's a little bit more realistic. If this is a 1, it would be 2 times 1, which would be 2. 1 over 6 to the second is just 36. You could also go ahead and use power to a power rule and multiply 6 times negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 6 to the negative 2 is simply 1 over 36. So same way of doing the problem, or slightly different way of doing the problem, but same result. Sorry, same result is what I'm trying to say. All right, so these next couple examples, I'm going to go ahead and make my exponents positive. Then I'm going to go ahead and simplify. We saw two ways. The way on the left, you made your exponent positive first, and then you went ahead and used exponent rules. The way on the, the 
right side simply just jumped right in and used those exponent rules and ignored the fact that the exponent was negative. All right, so I have four to the negative fourth times, and again, this is just a time sign. It's a different way of writing a multiplication sign. Times four to the negative second divided by four to the second. Well, the first thing I want to do is combine this as one fraction. So four to the negative fourth can be actually written as four to the negative fourth over one. And then when you multiply, you multiply across. So it's four to the negative fourth times four to the negative two, all divided by one times four to the second is just gonna be four to the second. Now, these two exponents up top are negative, so I'm going to flip them so they're in the numerator. Let's move them down to the denominator. So it becomes one divided by four to the second, which was already there. Then we're gonna bring down four to the fourth. Now it becomes positive because it's in the denominator. 4 to the negative 2 becomes 4 to the second. It becomes a positive exponent as well because we've moved it down to the denominator. So it's changed places. So now all I have to do, I have the same base. So I can simply add left to right. So it's 1 over 4 to the 2 plus 4 plus 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. So I have 1 over 4 to the 8th. Or you could write it as 4 to the negative 8. So you might see that as an answer choice. So in this case, I made my negative exponents positive first by taking the reciprocal, and then we added them. There we go, a little bit more clarity. Now let's look at problem number six. I have four to the negative second times four to the sixth, all raised to the negative fifth power. So the first thing I'm going to do is follow order of operations, and I'm going to simplify what's in parentheses first. So I'm actually gonna forget about this negative five for a moment and just leave it outside the parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite my negative exponent to make it positive. So four to the sixth will stay on top. And this technically would be over one. So I'm just gonna move four to the negative two down to the denominator to make it posi a positive exponent. So now I have four to the sixth divided by four to the power of two. Now I'm gonna use the quotient rule, subtract my exponents, six minus two, we have the same base, we have a base of four, so six minus two is four, so now I have four to the power of four. So I can't go any further with simplifying what's inside parentheses. So I'm done with this piece, and I'm gonna just use my power rule and work on what's outside the parentheses. Now before I multiply, look, this is a negative exponent, so I'm going to make this whole thing positive. So it's, I'm going to put 1 over 4 to the 4th raised to the 5th power. So now my 5 is positive. We'll go ahead and multiply. 4 times 5 is 20. So now I have 1 over 4 to the 20th. Or you could write that as 4 to the negative 20 since it's in the denominator. So it's the same thing. And then last but not least, let's look at example number 7. Number 7 is 5 to the negative 1 divided by five to the zero, all raised to the negative three. And again, as always, let's follow order of operations. So I'm gonna simplify what's in parentheses first, then I'll use my exponent rules. So let's forget about the negative three power for the moment, and let's look at, I've got five to the negative one divided by five to the zero in parentheses. The first thing I'm gonna do is replace that five to the zero with one, because anything raised to the zero power is actually one. So now I have five to the negative one divided by one. I need to make this exponent a positive, so I'm going to flip the fraction. So this time I'm going to put five to the one in the denominator, move it from the numerator. So now I have one over five to the one and my exponent is now positive. So I've simplified this as far as it can go, one fifth, I can't do anything else in parentheses. So now let's address the power outside the parentheses. So it's a negative three, I need to make this a positive three, so I'm gonna flip it, which means I'm gonna move five from the denominator to the numerator. So we have five to the one now in the numerator, and the one goes in the denominator. So you could simply write this as five to the one times the power of three, or raised to the power of three. So again, let's multiply our exponents. One times three is three, so we now have five to the third or 125, depending on what the answer choice lists. 
that's it.